Well, hello and welcome again to Blue Garden Cottage. I am really excited to be able to be with you today because today is the day that I share my video with you on the recipe that I promised you last week. The naughtiest, most unhealthy, but most delicious sugary treat. And those of you who've seen the pictures already know that they are South African cook sisters. Just a word of caution. I will be, we, we will be frying, and I you know I don't fry, not for a very long time and, and in the past few months I haven't even been using not even a teaspoon of oil in frying my onions. I've gone to water frying my vegetables when cooking. So this recipe I've had for very many years, it's a traditional thing I had when I was a child in South Africa, it's a favourite. Um, but because it is deep fried and contains a humongous amount of sugar, so bad on both oil and sugar, it's not one I make often. The last time I made it, as I said, was like four years ago. But I only made it this time because I was begged to make it. So I made it and then I thought, hmm, I wish I had filmed that so that I could have shared it with you. Oh well, according to the rest of the family, just another opportunity to make more Cook Sisters. Which will be a first that I do more than one in so many years. One batch. So this batch... I will do step by step for you so that you can see how it's made and I'll give you the recipe and I'll put it in the description box below as well. Also I have decided that I will make another batch at Christmas time because I want to experiment with Christmas flavours for Cook Sisters and I mean Christmas time whatever you call it is that not just the time for the most decadent of recipes? Usually um, and traditionally these expensive and decadent things are kept for special occasions, not just an everyday treat. So I thought, well, let's experiment with some Christmas flavours. So I will share another batch with you at Christmas time. Like last year, I gave you that recipe for the lemon poppy seed bread. I'll put a link in the description box. No, I won't. I'll put it in the end card for you in the top corner of the video. So click on the little I button and there will be a link to an, to that video. Um, so I thought, why not make it a tradition at Christmas of sharing a favourite recipe with you? So I think that's going to be quite interesting. To come up with a Christmas flavour. Okay, so word of caution, deep frying. I have a deep fryer and I'll show you that tomorrow um, because I will not fry in a pot, a frying pan pot, because so many house fires are caused because of deep frying. It is an extremely dangerous thing to do on the cooker top, even though people have done it for very, very, very many decades. But it is a very dangerous thing to do. I will only use the oil once, so it is extravagant and it is wasteful because the oil can't be used more than once for health reasons. But it's not wasted. It's not poured down the drain. It is taken. I put it in the bottle that it came in. When it's ice cold again, I put it back in the bottle and I take it to my local recycling center where they have a specific barrel for used oils. And it gets recycled and turned probably into a kind of biofuel. Okay, that is why I very rarely ever make this recipe and if I haven't put you off yet let me reverse that on you and just remind you that this is so decadent and so delicious that you might be tempted to have many more but when you know what goes into it you will treat it 
as a very rare treat. Now let's get on and make the syrup because the syrup has to be made the day before, at least 24 hours. I made mine last week 24 hours ahead of time and it still was not cold enough to put into the fridge to get cold enough to be used because your syrup has to be really 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 cold not quite frozen but very very cold okay so you are going to put this dough that you make straight from the very hot oil lift it out and put it into the very 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 cold syrup so that it sucks the syrup right the way through are oh, your teeth hurting yet oh my day Yes, but so that is the dangerous bit is the frying and heating the sugar. But like anybody who's ever made boiled sweets before knows you do not mess with boiling sugar. But we're only going to boil it for a little bit. I'll show you that in a minute. So do take care. Don't have the children or the animals around when you're making these um, treats. It is dangerous, but hopefully it'll be rewarding. Okay, I hope I haven't put you off, seriously, but I just thought I should mention those few things because all the recipes and all the videos I've seen of people making them, not very many people discuss some of those dangers and hazards. So I hope I've cleared that up. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on with the really naughty but nice part, and that is making it. So firstly, the syrup. But for now, I am going to put a whole kilogram of sugar. This is refined white sugar. Again, health hazard, but ignore that for now. Okay, a kilogram of sugar, right? Plus a few cinnamon sticks to a taste. No specific amount, it depends on your taste. If you don't like it, leave it out. I have not, in the beginning when I first made Cook Sisters, never put cinnamon in at all. Ground ginger. As I was saying, one and a half cups of water into that sugar. It's already bubbling. Apple bubble boiling trouble. Right. The zest and juice of one lemon. Go straight in. And I'm going to put just a tiny drop more of concentrated lemon juice. Just for a bit more ascorbic acid. Right then. And the spoon, where are you? My porridge spoon. Love, you want hubby made for me. And I'm going to stir that sugar until it dissolves. Okay. A little bit of a mishap there. While I was trying to show you the recipe, I had an interruption. Somebody needed to come through the kitchen. So I stopped the video to allow the chaos to pass. So I can have. And it was just when I was adding the water. So. The sugar burnt and well, it didn't burn, but it stuck to the bottom. So, anyway, I'm dissolving until it goes smooth. I'm stirring until it dissolves completely and goes clear. I will let it come to a gentle boil for about seven minutes. Now, the, the original recipe I used didn't use the rind, it didn't use cinnamon, but it did add some cream of tartar. I don't have any, so I'm just sticking with what I've got, and it'll work fine. The lemons are unwaxed organic lemons. I found reduced, so perfect. I didn't have to wash off any wax and lose oils with that. 
and now they've not been treated with chemicals so that was a bargain finding them like they were one pound 75 for four reduced to 44 pence which i thought was a bargain and a half okay so i think i'm going to leave it at that and then i'll come back to you when it's done when it's completely clear and dissolved and I increase the heat let it boil and simmer gently for seven minutes and turn it off I'll simmer it without disturbing it at all no stirring and then I'll turn it off and let it go cold when it's completely cold I'll strain off the cinnamon and the lemon peel and let it completely cool before putting it in the fridge to get even colder in fact I already have some in the freezer and it'll be too cold and thick to use straight from the freezer so what I'll do is when this has been in the fridge I'll take the others out the freezer mix them together the two batches of syrup so that they come to the right temperature but this has to be made the day before so that it could be ice cold when you come to use it when you Right, so I have got the dry ingredients and the others ready for the dough, which is actually a pastry dough rather than a batter dough. Um, some people have described it as being like a donut. It is not. This is more like scone. That's a scone recipe to some stage of it, and then it turns into a heavier dough recipe. So I'm going to share that with you now. In here I have the flour salt baking powder margarine all crumbed up together like you would for scones till it's very fine bread crumb type i think even finer than bread crumbs all rubbed in and mixed together the actual recipe and amounts is in the description box below so you can have a look at those if i can manage to do it on this other editing app because I don't have my computer at the minute I might be able to put a little box with ingredients on there otherwise it's in the description box below all right so far I've got the dry ingredients already um, and then I've got my water and my egg replacement that I am using is yogurt uh, soy yogurt there are lots of different replacements for egg in recipes. It isn't quite the same, but it does. Like I said, I haven't noticed much of a difference in this recipe for doing that. Okay, so I'm just going to mix all the ingredients together. Now, some egg replacements, you could use flax eggs made with um, flaxseed mixed with a bit of water and left to stand. You could use aquafaba, which is the chickpea water. Um, you could even use mashed banana, but I don't want to put mashed banana into cooks. This is because I don't want the flavor in there. You could if you like. I mean, well, you don't have to have it vegan at all. You can just use the normal recipe. So I think in that case, I probably will put both the vegan and non-vegan version in the recipe section. I'm mixing this all together. I'm going to bring it into a bowl. And then I'm going to knead it. This is the difference between this and scondo is the amount of water and the kneading. Because for this dough, you actually want to activate the gluten. So if you're gluten intolerant, don't even look at the, you know. Unless you're making it as a present, a gift for somebody else. This is the thing, this is so decadent that you don't even have to make it for yourself for Christmas. This would make a beautiful and very, very good Christmas gift to somebody else. Right, all brought together. And we're now going to knead it. Let me just get a little bit of it. I can already see the gluten start to work in the flour and this is just all purpose flour none of this therefore whole food plant based oops excuse me just a little bit of light there we go 
because normally with scones you would never want to handle the flour too much with as light as possible but with cook sisters you want to knead it and activate that gluten and even though there's no yeast in there you're going to let oops sorry you're going to let this dough rest to give that gluten chance to activate so i'll be back in a minute right so i've been kneading this for about five minutes the problem i had is that i had an all-purpose flour but it was to me it was too light and it was very much for cake and so I had to add in and do the kneading with sprinkling some some bread flour just to get some more gluten in there and now it's actually kneading properly so in all I think generally they say kneading for about five minutes but I say check your flour they're all different really and you know when it's right because it's not sticking to the counter it's making a lovely smooth silky ball and it it bounces back almost like bread flour so we really want to activate that gluten in the dough oh it feels so good I don't want to stop kneading oh I've forgotten I haven't baked bread for about a month or so it's been crazy busy there's so many things I haven't done this year and in especially this last month I've done practically nothing of any actual um, milestone meeting and things I used to do that used to help towards you know that oh well one day at a time one thing at a time life can beat me up already I don't need to do any more beating up oh that seems to be the benefit of kneading I don't want to stop thankfully with cook sisters it's not going to hurt right so now I'm going to put this back in the bowl I'm going to cover that up and leave it for a couple of hours to rest and let that gluten act even more and it'll swell up nicely and I'll show you what we do then so here we are dough ready and a big knife some people use rulers to measure their pieces I don't I don't want to squash out too much of that lovely bubbles now traditionally they say to only make it like five mil thick I'm a little bit over not quite a centimeter but I'm going just a little bit thicker than half a centimeter it's five millimeters don't ask me what that is in Imperial. I was not brought up in Imperial. So I have not got a clue. Right, so I'm cutting some straight edges. Right. And I think I'm going to cut it down the middle. Because I want this time around, I don't want the just tiny ones make bigger ones and one on its own will be big enough should have done that shouldn't I I think that would be big enough really let's have a look and see because I don't measure it most people go like five centimeters wide by 15 centimeters long that's about what I've got here okay so I've cut it into I've cut it like that not right the way through 
and I'm going to plait it, a tight plait. I don't want it to be a loose plait and have gaps in the middle. So I'm making it a very tight plait, folding it over and pinching it so it doesn't come apart. And that is what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to do all of this that way. And then the off cuts, I shall just blend together, knead again, and do the same thing with that. Any tiny bits left over, I will just make into a little ball and do that. Right, I'll get back to you when I'm finished plaiting and cutting. Right, we're ready to start now. I have plaited and laid out all the cook sisters. Out of this batch, I got 16 because I made them much bigger. I cut them into 12 by 5 centimeter strips, whereas the smaller ones were more like 10 by 3 centimeters. So I got 24 of them out of that batch, and that was double the batch in the recipe. But the this fryer is a really good one when you set it to the right temperature. This is on the full at 190. When the temperature reaches its the right temperature, the light goes off. So we will drop that in and it should take 10 seconds to come to the surface. Okay, this is taking more than 10 seconds. So that oil might, it's starting to come up to the surface. There we go, that's right. Okay, so 190 is the hottest it can go on this fryer. So we're just going to have to put up with that and cook it for a bit longer. Yeah, they're taking more than 10 seconds. So I think in a, if you were frying in a pan, which was much more dangerous, you could get the temperature up a bit more. But this way is safer so we'll just have to cook them for longer I okay, guess so once they come out of the hot oil they'll go into the ice cold syrup and push it under with a fork and you'll literally see the color changes it sucks the ice cold syrup right through and then you leave it in for at least a minute or two sometimes three probably three for these because they're much bigger and then you pull it out drip off as much as you can and lay it on the tray to keep dripping normally I would have ice in the main bucket underneath to keep the syrup cold but this has been in the freezer and it's like it's like treacle it's so thick so i'm hoping it's not too thick to be absorbed into the cook sister we'll see that in a minute halfway through you can turn them over when they're nice and golden oh hang on there we go turns golden needs to be a bit darker than that so when it's all the way through, then we'll pick it up and lift it out. That's just the test ones of the two little balls that we had in there. Yeah. And my the equipment I have for usually taking it out of the oil is a pair of tongs. Um, you, some people use those slotted spoons with, for fried foods. I don't fry foods much. No, that's just a normal slotted one. They have a special wire one. I don't use them because I don't fry things as a rule. This is a very rare occasion. And those are just the test balls, so I am sure that this syrup will be fine. Now I'm going to put a couple more in. I think because I made these bigger, that's probably why they're taking a bit longer to rise to the surface. If they were smaller, they probably would take the 10 seconds. There we go, and I'll stick one more. I wouldn't stick more than three or four in there completely at a time. And that is it. Are these ones ready? Um, I'm not sure. It probably could do with cooking a little bit longer. could probably be a bit darker than there. Yeah, just a little bit darker. And, of course, the color will change as you put it in the syrup because it will suck it right up. There we go, drip off as much oil as possible and watch this magic. You can see it changing slowly. Let's get the other one in. Let's see if that one does it. 
yep there it starts to change it's quite magical you can't really see it on this on this camera but it's quite magical and i think the syrup is still a little bit thick so you have to leave it in there for a couple of minutes oh it broke i'll show you what they look like when they're done and what they should look like on the inside it's that physics thing of putting something hot into something ice cold with that texture and it just sucks the syrup right the way through oh my days don't even look this way if you have diabetes right, time for these to be flipped over oops there we go they will have to be flipped again they're not dark enough yet so there you go i'll come back to you when we've done a few more right so we're ready to take them out of the syrup it's been a good minute or two drip off as much as possible we don't want to waste this well it's not wasting the syrup we want to be able to get all of them done that's how i remember cook sisters in south africa fat and long it is fat food seriously fat food and when it's dripped off we put it on the tray There we go. We've got the next batch in already, but it takes a while. And that will sit there. I'll tell you what, they are very, very heavy. Very heavy indeed. I'll show you in a bit when I break one open what it should look like on the inside. But I'm glad that they never ever sold these by the weight. If they were selling them by the weight, you'd be paying a fortune. You'd be paying almost five pounds in money for just one. Another option if the spoons are too slippery is grab it with your fingers and drip it down long ways or it'll break. So this syrup is from the first batch of syrup. I put them into two separate bowls, so about a litre in each bowl. And after about six cook sisters, the syrup started to warm up a bit and it needs to be really cold. So I took this, put it in the big bowl with ice around it to cool off. And by the time the second bowl is too warm, this first one's cooled down again enough to be used. So we've swapped it for the second use. And that should see us through the two in the fryer and the last three on there. There you go. That's this batch done. And I've got an extra one on the plate. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Or should look like. Some already ready to go elsewhere. There's one each for the family here and the rest to go in the freezer. It is very tempting to have them... As soon as they've cooled down from taking out the syrup but i promise you it will be worth the wait to chill them first in the fridge for a couple of hours then they're much better when they're cold and even better if you put them in the freezer for a week nobody can wait that long but i tell you what if you want to put them away and keep them then it's definitely worth putting in the freezer for you know to keep them for a couple of months if you really want to because in my opinion it's not worth making they are so expensive and so time consuming to make that it's not worth making just one batch i use double the ingredients for both the syrup and the the dough um and i want to show you exactly how much sugar syrup these things take up this two liter bottle this two liter cold drink bottle was full almost to the top of syrup and this is what's left so almost a whole liter of syrup it's just just under let's say for you know ignoring um you know, <laughs> the differences in the calories because it really don't make a difference it's all bad calories but that is how much a whole liter of syrup between just 16 of these bigger cook sisters but yeah, that is a very, very naughty, decadent treat. And finally, what they should look like on the inside. That is it. The syrup gets sucked right the way through. Crispy on the outside, moist and syrupy right the way through. Very, very naughty and way better chilled, very chilled. 
So what I'm going to do with this syrup now, because it's so expensive and I don't want to waste, I will put that in the freezer. It will keep until Christmas and I will make the extra batch of syrup to go with that, I will make in December. But this will stay in the freezer until then. Hopefully it won't crystallize, but if it does, I'll just take it out and pour it in with the other syrup when it's cooked. Very, a very special occasion treat. And there is a special occasion because my third grandchild will be born in the next two days. That is a very special occasion indeed. So to all of you, I hope you have a very good week. Don't eat too many cook sisters. If it's too much hassle for you to make, just get somebody else you know to make the make the recipe for you. I think that um, after the ones I make at Christmas, I'm not going to bother again until at least our 40th anniversary, which is going to be at least six years away. If anybody else wants them, they can make them themselves. Here's the recipe down below. Good luck, enjoy. And I shall see you next week. Not too sugared out. Take care all. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.